Welcome to this week's Tuesday chat. And today we're gonna to talk about the pros and cons of rentals and what you can expect from putting your property in Antigua into a rental program. Now, as we all know, Nadia is the property master when it comes to all things property. So I'm gonna ask the questions and she's gonna give us all the answers. So uh, Nadia, um, for the average person, what can they expect in terms of the number of weeks, for example, they could rent their property in Antigua? So it really depends on the type of property, but you're looking anywhere from 20 weeks and up. Right, and uh, what determines the cost of, of, of how much you would charge for per property? What we normally do, uh, that's a very good question and that's very difficult to answer because it all depends on the type of property. How many bedrooms you've got, do you have a swimming pool, do you have a view, are you on the beach? That will all depend, that will all determine the price that you can get. Obviously the better the view, the more modern and stylish the furnishings, the uh, closest, closest to the water, you know those types of properties do get the most um, amount of revenue. And in terms of things like season, what can homeowners expect if they want to use the property as well? What would the, what would the tips sort of be? So the season in Antigua runs from around the 15th of December through to the end of April. Um, most homeowners um, from experience tend to come in February, which is actually the busiest month in Antigua. But also, you know, having a property in Antigua, you want to enjoy it as well. If you can, it would be good if you came in the summer months or October or November when it's less um, less busy. Or uh, another really good two weeks is the last two weeks of January because uh, uh, rentals kind of dip just after Christmas and then that's a good time to come as well. Right, so you still get winter sun in that scenario, but um, it's not the peak times, so you're less likely to be in the way of bookings. Absolutely. And what advice would you give to homeowners in terms of kind of preparing their houses ready if they wanted to put them in a rental pool? So um, I think think about, you know, when you want to go on holiday, what do you expect from a property? So when I'm looking at properties, I'm always like, what's the bed like? You know, does it look like a, a hotel bed? You know, has it got a nice duvet? I know that we're in the sunshine. I get that. But people want to look at a really comfy bed soft furnishings downstairs, a sofa that you want to sit on, kitchen appliances, you know, think about, you know, when you go on holiday, what would you like? Would you like a nice coffee machine? I certainly would. That would determine what property I booked. Um, and definitely outside furniture. People want to spend as much time outside. So having nice lounges with cushions, you know, maybe a little sofa. Um, the more outside furniture you have and the more comfortable it looks, the more bookings you'll get. Another thing to consider is to declutter and depersonalize. Put all those extra little things that uh, make the home yours into you know, a plastic box and pop it in the loft or you know, uh, in a storage room. Uh, and then when you come, you can bring those things out. But people don't want uh, lots of clutter. They don't want to open drawers and have lots of stuff in there. They want it clean. They want it to have um, the minimum that's needed to make their rental enjoyable. So it's more about utility and making it a little bit more like a uh, expansive hotel Absolutely. type experience. That's exactly what it is. It's like the best hotel room that you can get um, and it's got a lounge. It's like the presidential suite uh, in a hotel. And in terms of how it works financially, um, what can homeowners expect? For example, that they would pay a commission fee or they would pay a management fee. How would that sort of thing work? So in Antigua, the laws changed uh, just after COVID. So uh, if you want to rent out your property, you have to have a property management company, a professional company look after your property. Uh, and the reason is, is because you have to do certain things to register your property. The first thing is your tourism certificate. Then you register for tax, Antiguan tax, which is ABST, which is 14%. And then if you're a non-national, there's a further tax, which is 12.5%. Now this may sound like, oh, there's lots of taxes, but actually the guests pay most of the taxes. So the 14% the 14 tax and the five US occupancy fee per person per night, that is paid by the guest. And it just comes to you and it, then it goes straight out to inland revenue. 
The 12.5% if you are non-resident, non-national, then that is the tax that you pay on the booking to the government each month. Um, now, most management companies do all this filing for you and register you for your tourism certificate. So it's quite a, it's an easy process um, which is done for you. So, although it sounds quite complex, what you're really saying is actually because you have to have a management company, effectively the management company deals with all of the taxes, the fees, the tourism registration for you. Yeah. And it's really a case of uh, presumably you pay a percentage of the booking fees to the management company, is that correct? Yes, so um, most management companies in Antigua charge 20% plus tax. So if your rent is $1,000, then you're giving $200 um, plus the tax to the management company. But for that, they organize everything. So then meet and greet the guests, they look after any cleaning, obviously that will be an additional cost, welcome pack, and then they're looking after your guests throughout their stay. And the main goal um, for that management company, for us uh, in particular, is to make sure your property is looked after and your guests are looked after and you're getting those five star reviews. Because the more that you get, the more bookings that you will get and then your, you can increase your price. So your weekly rate will increase over the years, the more you know, reviews that you get and then you, know, you put more into it. And so it's, it's, it's a mini little business. Each home is a mini little business. So it sounds like there's quite a lot to do and obviously there's a management company and you're paying fees to the management company, you're registering with the government, but, and that sounds all a bit complex, um, even though you're gonna deal with everything, but what are the upsides for the homeowner? Well, so there's a few upsides for the homeowner. Um, firstly, um, having a property that's not lived in is never a good idea. So having the rentals, having people coming in and out of the property keeps the property well maintained and also it gives you the cash to maintain the property. If you're purchasing something on the water or the sea view, you know, on the beach, you know, you're going to have a high maintenance cost just because of the salt and the sea air. So having the rental income, you know, covers that. Plus, you know, it gives you lovely holidays and you can have a little bit more money to invest in, you know, more in the property or other properties in the future. So yes, there is a lot to do but it's definitely definitely something you should consider if you're wanting to invest in Antigua because it does cover all your maintenance fees and gives you extra money um, and keeps the house nice and fresh. So realistically, if someone's on the fence and they spend six months a year, would it be worthwhile them saying, well, actually for the other six months, I'll put it in a rental pool for short-term rentals? Absolutely, but we tend not to do rental pools so each individual home is advertised as that home. It's not a pooled system. So your guests are paying for your house and you get the money for that house. Um, but definitely, even if you're gonna spend six months here, definitely rent the other six months because in most places, you have a full season um, in Antigua. Although the busy season obviously is the winter, the winter sun for the Caribbean. In the summer months, we have carnival, art week, restaurant week. So, you know, that we still get quite a few bookings over the summer holidays. Um, so if you want to, you know, you're staying here for the winter and then you're traveling Europe in the summer, definitely put it in a rental program. And lastly, in terms of a capital benefit, I mean, I'm always thinking about investment value, longer term value of property. Does it actually have an impact on the long term value and the investment value of the property? So absolutely. Um, having an investment that can generate in income like a little business and maintain the property so you're keeping the value um, is definitely, um, definitely a wise investment. So is it, as it were, a business in a box that you go, right, I'm going to make income off this, like buying a flat in London? No, it is more of a lifestyle choice. It's a beautiful home in the Caribbean that looks after itself and appreciates in value. Thank you very much for watching this week's Tuesday Chat. If you want further information on how to put your property into a rental programme, then please contact us. And if you like our Tuesday Chats and want to watch further videos, then please subscribe below. Thank you very much.